This is my goodbye to Sandy, my biological father. And I wanted to, he was basically the start of my journey in this physical life that I'm having right now. And his passing has made me really reflect on a lot of different things. And I wanted to share that. It feels like there's a door closed, an ending for me, and new doors opening. And I really wanted to share that with anyone um, who is sensitive or is experiencing trauma from childhood. Um, I'm just offering my perspective on that. So goodbye, Sandy. I love you unconditionally. And that's really been my awareness these last few days. Um, it is possibly more common at this point when somebody passes to say loved and never forgotten. Well, in my case, my truth I feel is very different. I never loved him Earthside a great deal, to be honest. I lived most of my life in fear of him. However, I will never forget you, Sandy, my biological father. I could never forget all the things that you have taught me. And I will go on to understand and de deeply develop and, and move with everything that you have taught me. Um, and it's not out of love. It is out of unconditional love that I now find myself in that I'm able to share this with the world. To me, there's a huge difference with love and unconditional love. And this is what I have reflected that my dad, Sandy, has truly taught me and I have grown to develop over the years because of the experiences I shared with my dad from my childhood and my family. As you might know, um, if, you, if you have known me, then you'll know that my dad was a violent drunk um, with his family, so my sister and my mum. But apparently, he was the nicest of blokes in the pubs. Um, so he was known as a really nice guy. Um, so it really confused me for a lot, long time why he could be like that in the pub and then be really violent at home with his very young family. Um, so I'm not even sure if his closest friends would have any idea of his own past. <laughs> so he left our home when I was seven years old due to the terrible beating that he actually gave me. And, he, you know, he beat us up at different times. But this particular night was really quite traumatic. Um, he actually caused my spine and rib cage to fold in a way that the front of my rib cage doesn't align. Even today, there is a, a, there's a slight misalignment in my rib cage. Um, I was like a flower after that beating. The colors of violets and bluebells and however deep the bruising was on the outside, they actually were really deep within me at that point. And these inner bruises were not just in me, they were in my mum and my sister too. I messaged Sandy about seven years ago and I wrote, I forgive you. And I wrote the long list why. And he wrote back and he said sorry for all that he had done. And this to me was a huge step forward for me in my life. I was able to let go of all the pain, all the hurt, all the abuse, all the letting in more freedom and love in my own world. Letting that stuff go allows you to let in more love and uh, create more of a loving life for yourself. Now, I'm a highly sensitive person. Um, to some know that as HSPs. What does that mean? Well, I look at things deeply. I sense things that other people might not sense and understand. So like, for instance, when my dad would come home from the pub, I would actually know energetically when he was coming in. My, my sister used to apparently help me as well and tell me he's coming <laughs> so um you know there may have been a lot of sensory things going on too 
Um, but I do, I sense things deeper than most people. Um, people don't normally feel things that I feel and sense that I sense. Um, and I cry deeply. I love deeply though as well. So I love deeper than most and I strive for the truth in all that I do. Everything that I am processing, I'm, I'm always asking myself, what is true here? I thrive in an authentic energy and unconditional love. So I don't thrive in anger and resentment and hatred. I do not thrive in that environment at all. So that's just for me. I don't, I really don't enjoy that environment at all. Um, so I, I consciously commit to creating an unconditional, loving, authentic environment for myself so that I do thrive. So these experiences have led me down a deep path of healing, awareness and understanding as I have searched for the truth. I am a searcher of truth. Um, so I have realized the truth in all of this. I understand that for someone to be cruel, violent and angry, upset, have an ability to physically hurt a family as he did, he had to be hurting so much inside. Sandy is not exception to this. He clearly had lost the love for himself. He lived for his social life in the pub, it seems, missing the huge world around him, conflicted perhaps with his own traumas and past hurts, uncomfortable thoughts, and the tool to escape for him was alcohol. Unconditional love on this planet does seem rare. <laughs> I don't really see much of it or feel or sense much of it around in a physical sense. Um, other people are doing their own thing and have their own things going on. Um, and humans seem to have been very creative to try and find coping mechanisms or alternatives to find relief from this cruel world, which I totally understand. Um, and I've been in those situations too, trying to find what could help me through this cruel world. Unconditional love is without judgment, loving someone or something without conditions, seeing the situation for the truth that is there. And I want to share what my dad has actually taught me. He taught me that if I get angry at anyone, that anger is mine. That anger manifests within me in every cell. The cells deteriorate with the emotion of anger. Emotions can affect my physical health and make me feel really shit in the process. He has taught me that trauma can allow us to live in the past. It took me years to overcome a man shouting in any form, movie or in the street, regardless, I would immediately go into fight and flight mode and I would have my emotions and stress kicked straight back in because it was a flooding memory of, oh, you need to keep yourself safe because there's a man shouting in, the, in my awareness. Overcoming that made me realize that I was living the past every day with the intention and the determination and commitment, I decided no more. I made a choice that I would never be powerless to that again or my past. He taught me that I had that strength within me. He taught me that I hid myself from the world, that I feared most men, that I was not um, in my past anymore, um, that my emotions don't have power over me and that I could connect to unconditional love and love me fully and that I felt amazing when I did and connect to my soul and be present in this life, even if it got uncomfortable. That uncomfortableness is still not more powerful than me. He taught me that alcohol and drugs are not a tool to help you escape. Um, it can be a life sentence. In my view and experience, they do not work for me at all. Like I've tried, <laughs> I did try, give it a good shot. Believe me, being a Scottish lass and that cultural conditioning, I really gave it my best shot <laughs> until my body really told me to stop. 
My body is so sensitive to alcohol, possibly an inbuilt trigger from my dad's experience. But I thank him for that <laughs> because instead of using the alcohol or a drug, uh, I was able to become a super sensitive being. I was super sensitive to alcohol that even half a glass of wine would set me spewing over the toilet for like three days and have the migraines and the headaches that were just disgusting. <laughs> so it didn't work for me. But I became a super being because I realized I didn't need any tools. I didn't need any um, alcohol or drugs to escape my life. I decided to become really present with what I was feeling and, and move through all that. So my decision to overcome the Scottish last cultural and more conditioning, I realized that I became more powerful over all the conditioning and programming and allow myself to have fun regardless of drinking alcohol or using drugs. I had given my power away to these vices before and I now use holistic methods to process my emotions and I unconditionally love me. In my view and experience, there are tools to help you feel temporarily happy and an excuse to party, to have fun, to deny how you truly feel and pretend to lose your memory at times, which is handy if you've done something that you don't really want to have done. Um, you escape this reality for a while. You escape the cruelty, the lack of love, the lack of everything that goes on. You, you might even forget your worries for a while. You park them and then pick them back up later. However, sometimes it becomes a way of life. Just like driving a car, you can automatically program your own life. And that's what I feel Sandy did. I'm sensitive and I now know my dad was too. The extent he used alcohol to numb his pain, he must have been hurting so much inside and wanted to escape this world so badly, which actually means he was actually sensitive to it all, or there would have been no need for this behavior. Looking back at my childhood, why would he be so angry at his children? Enough to beat them up, enough to really be angry. And, you know, when my mum made the wrong potatoes for dinner, he would get really angry and throw the plate across the room. Was it really because I was late home one day when I could barely read the time? Was it really truly acknowledged that these sweet, beautiful, loving girls and loving wife, that, you know, he would get so angry and want to hit them? The message to me is clear. We triggered him. We triggered him because we were loving, sweet, fun, authentic people. And deep inside, he wanted that to come out and he couldn't. He buried the love inside him so deep that he could not bear to even be around us. All the smiles and loving, happy, cheery, authentic people that we were. He was most happy with and around the people who had also closed their hearts. He was resonating at that vibration. He was resonating with that energy. And everyone maybe who was hiding their own truth and living conditioned with love. My dad clearly learned this behavior when he was young. When it was, whether it was a fight at school or whether he was called a Jesse for caring about somebody else. And was it in a beating he had himself or he decided he would never let that side of him out again, dare anyone come along and try and open his heart. He would fight so hard to keep his positive loving heart closed just in case he was ostracized or in separation from the boys club or did he feel that he would never belong. These are probably the values my dad fought for all of his life, hiding that little boy inside that just wanted to be loved. 
He set his own conditions on how he loved himself. Having a family of two loving, fun girls clearly was triggering for him, and this created the pain from deep within him. So he desperately tried to hide his love within, and he chose the anger, the conditioning. He never let go of the original experience and the decision to close his heart so his soul could not show him how to be unconditionally loved. People I have learned do not really want to understand and hear the truth. If they've made those values and conditionings and programs, then they actually fight against the truth and will become very reactive to defend their untruths. So when people do not like to hear the truth, they resist it. They get angry with all sorts of um, things that are deep inside their conditioning and programming to keep themselves safe. And I understand that, I really do. I've done it most of my life. <laughs> so when we don't want to understand our truth, we don't want to acknowledge anyone else's truth either. So I see this now as a safety mechanism and it's okay, I totally understand. I do not judge this behavior as we've all done it on some level. When you ask a smoker to look at the truth of why they're smoking, they do not want to know the truth other than it's a fix in helping them in that moment. So they don't really want to change. They even ignore all the health issues, um, packets, I've got visuals on there. They ignore all of that because there's a value to that habit or behavior. And that fix, that's fixing something in that moment. So ignoring the truth to keep themselves safe in their own comfort, avoiding the real reason they're smoking, a stress or decision that would be uncomfortable for them to make without it. It is giving them perhaps a comfort zone of pleasure with an emotional attachment, hiding their truth and their emotions and giving their emotions power over the soul's unconditional love. Truths can be uncomfortable. I am not saying that they're not, they're very uncomfortable at times, but they also set you free. It does not mean that they should not be said or spoken about. Another truth I would have, would have not shared a couple of years ago, and I have now confidence in sharing. You may be wondering why I titled this Unconditional Love. Well, I know now that I have an unconditional loving relationship with my dad. He passed on the 20th of October, which was Wednesday, and I sent him all the love and healing he required for his transition. I knew in that moment that his soul journey and I was possibly going through a transition period. And I knew that at some point he would connect with me. Didn't know when, I didn't know why and didn't know how. <laughs> so I just knew, I just had this knowing inside. When we are sensory aware, sometimes you will just have a knowing and I'm sure you probably experienced that yourself. You just knew something was going to happen. So I sent him all the love and healing for his journey and transition. And I wished him to feel and express and sense and connect with unconditional love. I knew at some point when he was ready that he would connect with me. Since then, since Wednesday, and since being a highly sensitive person, I act well, I actually prefer to be, I actually refer to myself as a super being, not highly sensitive. However, um, highly sensitive is a more common term, so I'll use that for this experience. I felt his presence yesterday. So I felt Sandy coming into my awareness and my energy around me. I was in my car and I felt this energy on my right shoulder. And he came in and I could hear him say to me, listen to the next song. And the song was just finishing. Um, I can't remember which song was just finishing, but the song played and I immediately resonated with it and loved it. It was Phil Collins, You'll Be In My Heart. 
And I'm not sure if you're familiar with this song. I wasn't really either. However, the more I listened, the more I bawled my eyes out and let go of all the emotions I was still holding on for me. The words echoed in the car and that I would protect and love me and nothing that he had done in his life was around protecting and loving me. And I realized in that moment that he was now able to be the dad that he never got to be on the physical plane. He now got to be that dad figure for me. I understood immediately that these uncom uh, uncomfortable emotions were helping me heal the little girl inside of me, yearning for my dad to support and protect me and love me, to play, to empower me and my family. He was showing me that now in a space where he can actually feel it, sense it, and, and be that figure for me. I feel free. I have forgiven him and now unconditionally loving him. I can receive his love unconditionally too. And it heals such a deep part and space within me. I can still feel the emotions coming through. When I hear that song, I think of him immediately. And I know that he's around me. I also understood and know deeply inside he has made it. <laughs> I know he had already healed his own traumas. He felt the love and not just any love. He could feel the unconditional love. He knew his life was about creating a greater good. He knew how much I valued all my experiences. What if his life's journey was based on unconditional love, knowing that these experiences were actually going to help me become wiser, share how unconditional love works and touch someone else's heart and allow them and give them permission to open up in this physical life and not have to wait till you're dead to figure out that unconditional love starts with you. And we can do that in the present moment right now. It takes bravery and courage and it can be uncomfortable. And it, it's a... It's a truth that unconditional love is available to you. But I can assure you, it's worth it. And when you can unconditionally love yourself, you realize that people make mistakes and bad decisions all the time. And that really is all it comes down to. Let's make an authentic decision now to live life with unconditional love. It doesn't mean that you need to be around violent people. I am not saying that whatsoever. I'm saying when you're unconditionally loving to yourself, you navigate your life in a different way. And you therefore don't come across those kind of people anyway. So do you have a daughter, a wife, a friend that you can say sorry to? Get that bravery and courage to say, I'm so sorry. Get that bravery and courage to say, I'm sorry to yourself. Get that energy and emotions and get power with that vulnerability. Get power with being true to yourself. Get power with being more loving to you and the world around you. And we will see a happier, more loving world to be in for our next generation. Unconditional love is a choice. And I know it has set me free to love me and the world more and this side effect is actually happiness, long-term, authentic happiness. You now get to choose for you, but please know what you choose really matters. And please play the song, You'll Be In My Heart, and listen to the words. And I really encourage you to understand what those words mean. <laughs> Hi, Coco Pops. Animals show us that love all the time, don't they, Coco Pops? And um, yeah, if animals are freely unconditional loving, then so can we. Okay, thank you. Bye.